Shaber 1000 here. Today, a couple things I want to do on this. Uh, we'll get it up in the air. I want to change the fuel filter. I think, I think it's up here on this one, on the C4s. Uh, so I got to get this up in the air, and uh, we'll get that fuel filter changed. I got, it's got two radiator caps on it. I'm going to put some radiator caps on it. Fill it up with water and start it up. I'm going to have to, um, I've got to put it on the charger because I haven't had this thing started since November. <laughs> but so when I opened the door up on it the other night, the dome light was real dim, so. Little tiny frog there. Come on, buddy. So, then we'll talk a little bit about the master cylinder on this, the reason why I don't have any brakes. Uh, so, but let's go ahead and get this thing up in the air. I'll put you on a stand. We'll fast forward you through that. The jacking point, the original jacking point's right in here, you know, for the, for the, uh, the jack that comes with the car there's another jacking point up in here but i can't remember if i can get to that with that side pipe there or not so anyway i'm going to get the hood up on this thing i'm going to put the battery charger on it and we'll bring out a couple wrenches and the fuel filter and we'll get that changed Now, and it never starts from Walmart or junk. Um, let's talk about this real quick. Like I said, the brakes went out on it. Pedal just went clear to the floor, like there's nothing there. And I checked, that's full. That one's got some in it. But if it was a line, there'd be a puddle under it and one of them would be empty. So what I think, it's bypassing. There's like a little piston in here that when you push your foot down on the pedal, it pushes and pushes, it's got cups on it and it pushes fluid out, out to the lines. Now what happens when it bypasses is those cups go bad and instead of putting pressure into the lines, the fluid just goes back behind the cup and you go to the floor and then when you let off the pedal, it just circulates back around in front of the cup again. That's called bypassing. I think that's a problem we're having. I don't think it's stuck because the car moves. So, which when we first brought it out here, the brake pedal was stuck. The brakes were stuck on and I tapped on that, tap, 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 and it released. And I did that a couple times and I told her then, well, uh, it's probably not gonna last long but so I've got one of them ordered it's a used one because <clears throat> the new ones like over $200 so order to use one and I think what I'll do is I'll run the used one while I'm running the used one I'll go ahead and rebuild this one but uh, until then you know that's what we're going to do but right now let's go ahead and get fuel filter change now it's not the original radiator right down here you can see there's a radiator cap here right underneath this and there's one up here now so when I would run it I would just put water in and now, as you can see all that rubber is gone so it would just leak out um, that's not the original radiator so that's why it's got two caps on it so I'm going to put a what is it a 15 here and 16 or 17 up here so but yeah the fuel filter should be right down here but I'll get you up in the air 
I'll get this up near and I'll show it. I'll show that to you once I once I get the uh, get it up near. I'll I'll bring the camera under and I'll show it to you. She's up in the air. Now, I'm gonna get up under there. Let me grab a light too, and I'll show you where this fuel filter should be. Okay, so the fuel filter is right up in here. Right behind all this. <laughs> okay, now I have to drop this X frame down. It's clear across there because well convertible you know so I'm gonna have to drop this down if you don't have a convertible you're not gonna have to worry about it you might want to take this shield off here kind of a heat protector so it doesn't vapor lock and stuff when them headers get hot now and also yours might not have headers this one didn't originally these were put on after and they this is part of the exhaust right here it's pretty weird setup but anyway so I'm gonna have to get a wrench hopefully I don't know I'm I never took one of these down before so hopefully it doesn't bend too much I'll probably put that jack down under there on the back to kind of help support the body so it doesn't bend too much uh, but yeah um, I might just be able to unbolt these four bolts <laughs> stuff a piece of wood or something up in there right between the floorboard and that X frame um, might be able to do that just enough to get me up in there to where I can get a couple wrenches on that I don't know if you can even see it but trust me it's right up in there and uh, so let me go ahead and get these unbolted I'm gonna put a jack under the back of that X frame there to kind of help you know support it to keep it from twisting and that way it'll be even on both sides both sides over there are on the ground both sides here are going to be kind of up the front's off the ground but the back is you know is not but it's like i got some gel work to do here but that's that's later on guys um so let me do that okay guys so Got the fuel filter off. Sometimes you can just loosen these and pull that out. But I just went in and took mine off. It's a 10 millimeter. I'll show you where exactly where it goes here in just a minute. But I want to see what. Look at that. See that? That could be the reason why it's running rough. Now, that's not. That is not rust, unless it's coming from the line, because that tank is lined. It's a steel tank, but it's got the plasticish rubber liner in it. So, I'll get the new filter, and I'll show you which way this will go up in there. A lot of these will tell you, flow that way. So it's coming from the tank, going into here, and coming out this way, going this one goes up into your engine. Okay. It's easy to tell. The one that looks like a soup can goes to the soup. You know what I mean? Because it's souped up. Joke, but bad joke. But now I'm going to blow through this new filter. You can just blow through it just as easy as anything. 
This one, you got to put some pressure behind it to blow through it. So, yeah, use a new new fuel uh, new filter for sure. Yeah, real nice and easy. That's barely blowing. If I blow the same amount, it doesn't want to blow through. I got to really put pressure on it. So it is clogging. I don't know when the last time that was changed. It may never have been. And also on this one, it says out. Right there, it says out. So. Yeah, that's uh, definitely... It'll run either way, but if you run it this way, and this is going to your engine, it's just not going to filter. It'll still run, it just won't filter. So, and if you got fuel injections like we do, fuel injectors like we do, yeah, that's not good. So, yeah, this is 10 millimeter. Um, usually these will just slide out like that. So, I'm just going to go ahead and put this one in right now. This is a Wex filter, by the way, so it's a good filter. I'm just going to go ahead and put that on there like that. And I'll bring you up there and let me wash my hands off so I don't get gas on my camera. And, um, yeah, there's that, most of that's probably water, it looks like, dirty-ass water. Um, because, well, anytime you have fuel... <laughs> In a tank, you're going to get condensation, especially in tropical states like Florida. You're going to get a lot of condensation. So that filter did its job; it kept all this going, from going up into the into the injector. So I do have the fuel draining out. I'm going to let drain out what drains out. I have uh, five gallons of fresh fuel, and I've got some <clears throat> heat which is uh, it gets water out of your system. I'll also have some fuel injection cleaner. I usually don't like to do use that stuff, but I'll explain to you why here in a minute uh, once we get this back up in there. But so, let me get let me get my hands washed off and I'll show you exactly where this goes. It's not as bad as it seemed. I didn't have to drop the whole X frame. I probably could have got by without just taking them four bolts out. But anyway, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. All right, there's where it goes up in at. Right up in there, I pulled that little cover off. A little heat shield, protective shield. I can't see what you're seeing. But, just right up in there. Okay? Real easy. Um, the line is 5 8 And the, um, the filter is 13 16 Okay? Now... What you can do, see this is what I got going on back there. I can't see what you're seeing. I got my screen turned. I'm letting it drain whatever it wants to drain out, okay? Because what this does is, this comes out the top of the gas tank and then down and then back up into the, to the engine. What that does is, since this is lower than the tank, it creates a siphon. Now, that looks like a whole bunch. It's not really a lot because there wasn't much fuel in here anyway. So, looks like I'm going to have to get another pan over there. But, um, I want to do that on purpose. Try to get some of this old fuel out of here. And there's, there's a way you can get by without this happening to you. And I'll tell you here in just a second. Let me get out from under this car and get something over there. Hi right, guys, sorry I didn't realize you were zoomed in when I had you up under there just now. So I'm going to let it drain, do its thing. Now what you can do is find your fuel pump fuse. It's usually a 10, uh, a 10 amp, a little red fuse. It'll say fuel on it or fuel pump or whatever. Find that fuse, pull that fuse. Your fuel pump will not work now. Then you can start your car up and let it run until it shuts off. And that will get rid of all the fuel that's in them lines and it won't create a vacuum you won't have that problem now the reason why i didn't do that number one was you see how close it was to the headers and the exhaust pipes right there you know the side pipe i don't i didn't want to 
you know take a chance of burning myself or dripping some hot stuff onto the exhaust and you know I didn't want to wait another hour to get started on this thing so also I just wanted to let it drain out what it was going to drain out in that line so what you can do is you can blow back through that line with compressed air but um, you're just blowing anything that's in there already back into the tank and it's just going to suck it back up again so that'll help clean it out clean the line out a little bit the tank is I know it's clean it's probably got a little bit of water in it from condensation we don't run it very much um, because well there's no tire well the tires are bad now you know we got the brake issue so the master cylinder I think I just got a message that it was being shipped today so um, I should get it beginning of next week we'll put a master cylinder on I got a I got a tool I've never used this tool before it's really cheap it was like $12 uh, you plug it into your air hose and it will suck your lines it'll suck fluid out of your lines for you brake fluid so you can keep sucking that fluid out until it comes out clear and then you know you can bleed them that way by yourself uh, a lot of times I have gravity bled just opened up the bleeders and they'll gravity bleed now I'm not sure if this one will or not I've never uh, gravity bled a, a Corvette brake system before um, I always I always had power bleeders anyway but a lot of times if I was doing brake jobs you know I just like if I'm running all new brake lines the back ones once they're on you know I'll make sure there's fluid in the, in the back reservoir sometimes you can't do that you just got a single reservoir but while I'm doing something else let's say and I'll oh, just open them bleeders up and keep an eye on them you can also get your rubber hose to come off that bleeder down into a jug or whatever a brake fluid and you go in and pump it yourself and that'll get the air out but again you know you want to make sure there's no bubbles make sure it's a clear line make sure there's no bubbles in that line um, but like this thing uh, the best thing you can do is get a couple line wrenches even cheap line wrenches will help everybody says well I don't want to pay twenty thirty dollars for for a wrench I'm going to use once well you know you go to AutoZone or Advanced Auto they have what they call a tool loan you, you actually you just buy it and then when you take it back you get all your money back if you can't afford to do that <laughs> yes you can use regular wrenches just be very careful because those line those line fittings will will strip out so easy and then you know you're looking at repair kits you're looking at new lines and then you're probably going to get and buy the wrenches anyway to put the new stuff back on because you don't want to strip it again and now you're looking at a hundred dollars when you should have just spent the 20 or 30 for the wrenches you know I mean that's just in my opinion um, I'm fortunate enough to I have some line wrenches and I just have I, I do have the ones I needed here so um, but anyway guys so I'm gonna let that do its thing I'm gonna finish my cigarette before I walk over there <laughs> monkey be looking in the camera going why is the vet on flames <laughs> we don't want that <laughs> it's been in the family 29 years <laughs> no we don't want that so I'll be back with you guys I'll show you again up under there because I don't know what the last clip got because I was zoomed in for the plate deal uh, I wanted to show you what came out of that old filter um, yeah those filters they get water in them like that and see they're metal inside there too so it gets water in it your filter could actually be rusting you know and that that could cause that that dark stuff but I know the tanks not rusted because it like I said it's a line tank there's a liner in there it's it's you know coated it's a coated tank it's not a liner it's coated so and you know I was in there when I put a new fuel pump in and uh, yeah there wasn't there was a little bit of condensation moisture in it and so that's probably why it's been running kind of rough so but I got some fuel injection cleaner that I'm gonna put in it I hate using that stuff because this one's not gonna be too bad because all I got to worry about is the line and it's getting a new filter so whatever's in the line but you think about it, if you got a steel tank and if that can clean fuel injection fuel injectors it can also clean 
everything from the tank on back it's going to clean that rust and everything it's going to knock all that stuff loose then what's going to happen it can clog your filter <laughs> and it can clog your injectors worse that's why i don't like using it but in this case since i'm putting a new filter on and the filters up front on this one and the tank is um coated uh, i think most of that's just watering from whatever's left in the old filter so i i think i'll be all right using it this time then i'll put i'll i got a bottle of that heat to help up dry up whatever moisture may be left in there so all right let me finish my cigarette and uh i'll get you back up under there and i'll show you again where this came out of um because i can't see because i gotta i gotta put the screen back the screen will go back and kind of close but but this and then the screen will be on the side but then i can't see if i'm on this side i can't see what you're seeing so but it's not that hard like i said i could probably got by with um leaving them four bolts in that x frame but i just uh i just took it out anyway just in case i needed some more room you probably could get by with that without doing that so but you're definitely going to have to take that that cover off is two 10 millimeter bolts that's it make sure you put that stuff on too because I, I had one uh one time come into my shop and it was a c4 and guy said you know it started running kind of rough on him and he put a new fuel filter in it and it was fine for about a day he said and then it's like when it gets when you're driving down the road it'll start acting like it's running out of gas and he said you, you let it set for a little bit and start it up and it'll run fine again for a while what it was doing was when he told me that i said was there a cover over that uh over the filter and he said yeah it, it had two 10 millimeter screws in it i said you put it back on he was like does anybody i said well yeah i do but i'm a mechanic but yeah i said uh, a lot of people they might not have any problems with it but I said, like you, he had long tube headers too, which makes that closer. If you just got down pipes and and, um, and exhaust manifolds, it's a little farther away. You might not have an issue. But since he had the headers too, it's closer, and it was heating up his fuel, vaporizing his fuel. So you know you're not going to have fuel pressure, <laughs> you know, and you're not really going to have fuel. So it's called vapor locking. That's what I wanted to explain to you. It's called vapor lock. He says, well, I. I still got it since you got it up in there i'll run home and get it and uh you throw it on for me i said yeah i did that for nothing I just just those two screws he called me about two weeks later and said that was the issue that he hadn't any hasn't had any more problems with it since so but yeah he said well my friend did it and he just threw his away and i said did he have headers and he said no i think he's his was just the regular stock exhaust so i said well that's farther away you know that exhaust is farther away than the headers are because you know you got four tubes coming into one down there and uh so you know you're looking at that big round instead of that big round so it's closer and that's you know that's that was the issue so anyway short story time well whatever <laughs> anyway i'll be back with you guys all right guys there it is you can see it's pretty easy to get to I probably wouldn't have had to take them bolts out come on focus but I did anyway so there it is now I'm gonna put this cover it just goes back on sorry I can't fit you down in here but it's it's pretty simple it's just gonna go up in here like that those two bolts are gonna go back in these four bolts are gonna go back in I'm gonna set it down and then uh, We'll put fresh gas in it, and hopefully we can start it up.
So this is the fuel injection cleaning stuff. Like I said, I usually don't recommend that, but since I got a new filter and uh, it is a it is a uh, coated tank, I thought I'd give that a shot. And then I put some of this in here. Helps keep the water out. Oops. This stuff here. And this, this is what I put in. All right. Now I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna get some. Uh, I have a little bit of antifreeze. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put enough in because you never want to run just straight water because that antifreeze also helps lubricate your water pump bearings. So I've got a little bit over there. I'm just going to put that in it. I'm going to fill it up with water, make sure those caps are going to work, make sure it's not going to leak, and then I'll, uh, I'll drain it out later on and um, put regular antifreeze in it. pretty bad so I gotta have so I'm gonna have to back flush this anyway so I don't know what all this stuff is but let's go ahead I'm gonna put some I've got about a half a gallon of regular antifreeze that's used I'm just gonna put that in there for now and then we'll start it up make sure there's no leaks and we'll go from there all right guys you missed it <laughs> so I went ahead and I filled the radiator and I've got, whoops, sorry, I've got the tank filled, filled up there. That's the overflow down there. So we're going to start it up, let it warm up, and see if, uh, make sure there's no leaks. Dang, sorry guys. So, hasn't been run since November. So, like I said, I knew the battery was low. When I put it on there, it sure enough was low. So there wasn't even no sense in trying it, but we'll go ahead and try it now. I'll get the keys. I'm gonna cycle the key a couple times, let it build up some, let the pump uh, fill up that line. That's just the fan. The fan needs oil. <laughs> Hate that. All right, you ready? Let's hit it. Not bad. All right, let's let it run, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. We're gonna make sure everything's uh, doing what it's supposed to do. Looks like it is circulating. Got a 15 pound cap on the radiator. This one's getting a 16 pound. So, yeah, it's circulating. All right, let me let it build up some heat, get the thermostat to open up on it, and then uh, I'll be back with you. It's getting better now, but I noticed one time when I had the belt off of there, it seemed like it had a little play in that water pump. Whoa. So I think that's probably where it's coming from. I hope that's where it's coming from. 
I mean, like I said, I don't know who actually put the heads on and stuff, but I'll give it a minute and I should be able to see it dripping down in there. See, you can see it coming out there too, so. All right, let me check it out and I'll be back with you guys. Okay guys, so I think it's definitely the water pump. Um, like I said, I was pretty sure I was gonna have to replace that. Right behind that water pump is the timing chain cover. Right behind that's the timing chain. While we got it apart, why not throw a P Jackson gear drive in it? Huh? Something to think about. Right now, the, these uh, water pumps aren't that, they're not that hard to put on, and they're not very expensive. 30, 35 bucks maybe. So, I'm gonna look into that, but at least, you know, we got it running better now. I still think, I still think there's some water in it that needs to be, just moisture that needs to be taken care of. But other than that, uh, when we get the tires, this thing will be ready to go once we put the water pump on. So, all right, I'm gonna hose this down here real quick. And um, so Bruno don't come out here lapping that stuff up, right? So I'm gonna hose this down. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. And hopefully you learned something. So uh, remember, if you pulled that fuse out and ran it out of gas, when you get your filter changed, don't forget to put the fuse back in or it won't start. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next one. Shea Bear, the Myth, the Man, the Legend, gone for now. We'll see you all soon. Bye-bye and take care, everyone.